On this video, we're going to do an example of comparing means from two independent samples. And hopefully you've had a chance to watch the video dealing with uh, comparing proportions. And so you already know that uh, we're going to be dealing with samples that come from two populations that aren't related to each other. And what we mean by that, again, is that there's no natural pairing of any value from the first population with a value from the second population. There's no ordered pairs that would make sense to, to create. Here's the example we're going to do. A company conducted a contest for promotion. Now, some of the employees who weren't promoted, they filed a lawsuit claiming that the competition wasn't fair. It actually involved discrimination based on age. Okay, well, this is comparing means from two samples of, of uh, independent population. So the first thing we need to do is exactly identify what these two populations are. And one of these is employees not promoted and of course the other population should be obvious then it's the employees employees that were promoted not promoted and promoted hopefully you can read my writing there we need to word this into some sort of claim that we can actually test. So our claim is going to be that based on what the, the lawsuit would be about, that the employees who were not promoted claim that they are on average older than the employees that were promoted. So let's say my, my claim is, overall, in general, on average, the employees who weren't, were not promoted are and we really shouldn't just say older, we need to say they're significantly older. Significantly older than those, by that I mean those employees, who were promoted. Seems awful wordy, a lot of English there. So, you know, in math, we like to boil things down to the nitty gritty. And so, we're going to take all this and boil all this down to just symbols. Keep it really simple. So, what we're saying is, and hopefully you recall that whenever we have a claim, we break it apart into part that is identical to the claim and the part that would be true if the claim wasn't true. And we call that the null and the alternate hypothesis. Hopefully you recall that the alternate hypothesis always deals with an inequality. And that's what this claim is about. Right? We're, the claim is that the non-promoted employees are significantly older. So, if, if we say that the employees that weren't promoted are from population 1, we're going to write, we're going to call that population sub 1. Okay? And the employees who were promoted, we're going to call that population sub 2. Okay? So, if we're talking about on average then, the employees who weren't promoted, their age, their average age, we're going to represent as being mu sub 1 from that first population of those who were not promoted. And we can say, therefore, that mu sub 1 we're claiming is significantly bigger than mu sub 2. 
here is our alternate hypothesis. Okay? Hopefully you also recall that the null hypothesis is the hypothesis that deals with equality. So in this case, still using population 1, P1, population 2, P2, we're claiming then in the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the ages of these two groups. It really wasn't age discrimination. We're saying no, the average age of the one population is pretty much the same average age as the other population. These are my two hypotheses. Hopefully you also recall that we always set up and test the null hypothesis and then based on whether or not our test rejects or doesn't reject the null hypothesis tells us about this alternate hypothesis which just happens to be in this case what our claim is. Right? This, this is the original claim right here. And I've decided that we're going to test this claim with a significance level of 5%. And hopefully you know what that means at this point. If not, we'll talk about it in just a little bit. All right, before we go any further, we need to talk about two important uh, issues here. And they're both related. Number one, we don't have any information about either population's standard deviation in terms of the the standard deviation of the age, ages of the population. And since, and hopefully you recall that since we don't know the population standard deviation, we can't use Z values. We can't use Z scores. And we can't use a Z value for the critical value. And since we can't use Z scores, we can't use a Z score table, which means we can't look up a P value for our sample statistic. And again, if any of this stuff isn't making sense to you, maybe you need to go back and look at the video that deals with uh, uh, proportions first. This is really all spelled out there. Now, since we can't use a p-value to do our testing, what do we do? Well, instead, as you might recall from previous studies of confidence intervals or, or earlier testing of hypotheses, we instead use the T critical value from the T distribution table. And hopefully you also recall that it's based on two things, our chosen significance level, and also it's going to be based on the larger of the two degrees of freedom. Since we have two samples from two populations, we have two degrees of freedom, and we've got to decide which one to use, and we always use the larger of the two. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is the end of part one. In part two, we'll continue by sketching this distribution.